cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I was, I failed and I went back. I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded. All the things that kicked my ass, I put them all in the cookie jar because at times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test. It's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second. I take the one second decision. I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up. Oh, motherfucker, you went, you were in three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died and killed it was so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. You are. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair crapping up my back, peeing blood in my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You gotta be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not gonna stop. And that's, I took all the negative things, I need to go to the hospital, this and that, and I used it all. Who the hell could even get on that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stretch fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. When I'm broken, I relish it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use it. Because, if I'm broken, then I just found my limitations. And until I know what my limitations are, how can I push them? How can I get better? But once, once I see it, once I feel it, once I see where I was broken, then I can attack that weakness. I can fill in that gap. I can reinforce that breach. If you break, it means it's time to fortify your will to make it stronger. And look, there's there's all kinds of different ways to break. You can break physically, you can break mentally, you can break your heart, you can break your spirit, and none of those are fun. And all of those are gonna leave a mark. But the mark that they leave can be the mark of victory or it can be the mark of defeat. Because every time you break, and in every way that you break, while it's a chance, it's definitely a chance for you to give up and for you to just to fall apart. But there's also opportunity. There's opportunity to get stronger and get smarter and get faster and get tougher and get more stable and get more resilient and get better. When you break, you have the opportunity to show the world, the whole world, what you are really made of. So, so if you break, if, if you break, the fight isn't over. In fact, if you break, the fight is just beginning. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place covered and you're covered in blood and sweat and dirt and filth as you rise above what you were and as you take the form of who you are supposed to be you will see that in the very act of standing up in the very act of fighting on you will become and you will remain unbroken some slaves said, I don't care what we go through, we gonna survive this.
400 years of slavery. We're going to get through this. And you can't get through it. 1825? You can't get through a writing class, and you got tutor after tutor, resource after resource. The problem is, you ain't never felt no pain before. You're soft. It's a soft generation. You quit on everything. Our people did not quit. Harriet Tubman not only made it, she went back and got some more. She said, you know what, I made it, but I'm, I'm going to walk all, listen to me, shh, not ride the bus. I'm going to walk all the way back down to the south to get some more. And you quitting on 1825? Now watch this, you quit after you, listen to me, you get a sleeping bag and you wait for him. You wait for the first WRA instructor to come in and you come out your sleeping bag, I need. You quit after you do that. You quit after you had, listen to me, a, a WRA party. I'm, I'm having a party, everybody come over. I got food and everything and let them get over there. Let it be all the best writers. All right, I fooled y'all. I want to have a writing party. You quit and you ain't even tried yet. Last one, I'm sorry, last one. Listen to me, pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. Listen to me, I'm telling you as I leave. I'm telling you as I leave, I was homeless for two and a half years. And the problem with most of you, you never felt no pain before. Y'all spoiled. Y'all spoiled. Some of y'all spoiled, just bottom line. Your parents have done everything for you. You never had to do nothing for yourself. You're spoiled. We're going to keep it real tonight. Some of you are spoiled brats. Every time you ever got in trouble, somebody in your house got you out of it. Every time you've done something you're not supposed to do, people say, Eric, your mother's a tyrant. You're right. She kicked me out. You're right. She's mean, but she developed a man because she put me out there and said, you're going to have to grow up. And some of you have never learned to grow up. And so every time something get hard, you quit. You call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. I dare you not to go home. Somebody said, I don't go home, I feel bad. Go, go through it. You ain't going to die at the end of pain and success. You're not going to die because you're feeling a little pain. I'm not eating like I eat at home. That's why you're about to go to the next level, because if you keep eating like you ate at home, you will keep being a boy or a girl. It's time to become man, woman. So don't, don't worry about a little pain. My greatest asset is I was homeless, so I can't feel a whole lot of pain. I've already been alone. There's not a, whole lot of, it's not, not a whole lot of hurt I can feel on a little paper, on a little test. So I leave you, I leave you, listen to me. We have gotten to a point where it's midterms and we're moving forward. The days of you getting money, I'm not saying we quitting, but I'm saying the day has got to go from external to internal. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Get off the phone. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not available until the end of this year. <laughs> no, I'm for real. You reached the right number, but you called me at the wrong time. Call me back January 1st. <laughs> I'm about to get busy now. Huh? I want you to have a countdown of your own and say when the countdown is over, where the real, shh, watch me, because when I was homeless, I knew something was wrong. I knew that wasn't the best of me. And one day I said, will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sleeping on the street. Stop walking up and down Finkel Avenue like you ain't got none and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. Stop being afraid to go to college because your daddy didn't go and your mama didn't go. Stop being afraid and be the best Eric Thomas you can be. But listen to me, it's going to be hard. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree, but I got it. And guess what? On a degree, it don't have dates. So if it took you four and it took me 12, it don't show up nowhere. But I'm exactly where I wanted to be because I realized I gotta commit my very being to this thing. I gotta, I gotta breathe it, I gotta eat it, I gotta sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you, the world is yours.